Hello everyone, my name is Roy Jafari and I would like to welcome you to another video. In the previous video, we talked about multi-layered perceptron and we did see how MLP is a very good and capable algorithm when we want to tackle the task of prediction and we are seeking a very high level accuracy. In this video, we are going to see how MLP, which is inherently designed for prediction, can also, with some adjustment, handle the task of classification. This is going to be a very short video, so let's get started. Uh, as we've seen, you know, when we when we talk about task of prediction or classification, there are a lot of similarity between them. And by and large, what we are trying to do, we are trying to find a relationship between the independent attribute and the dependent attribute for the for the task of prediction or classification and the, the only difference between prediction and classification at this high level of understanding is that our dependent attribute for prediction is numerical numerical and our dependent attribute for classification is, is categorical this is something we have seen over and over again in these videos and the reason we are going over this is because now we want to uh, change an algorithm MLP which is inherently designed for prediction so we can use it as a way to classify or perform the task of classification MLP we discussed you know it's a, the most famous uh, artificial neural network it has specific you know structure and the way it, go, it, it goes about learning if you haven't watched that video, I mean, I've talked about, you know, different aspects of MLP, how it works at a very intuitive level. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, please go ahead and back and watch that video. But let us, let us start talking about what we want to talk about in this video. And the fact, the fact of the matter is MLP is not like naive Bayesian decision to query KNA that are designed for classification. MLP is designed for prediction. But it doesn't mean that MLP cannot handle classification. With, with some adjustment, it can actually be a very good at uh, it can actually be a very good at uh, very good at the, handling the task of classification. So let us see uh, what are those adjustments, what are the challenges in our way uh, to create MLP that can handle classification. So this is the example we want to solve, right? This is the example we've seen. Um, when we were talking about decision tree, naive Bayesian, and uh, decision tree, right? Decision tree, naive Bayesian, and KNA. Now we want to do this with MLP. So what are the challenges ahead of us? I mean, wh what's stopping us from just going and saying, okay, let me uh, connect the customer income years in current job and education level as my input neurons, and then my load loan paid as the output. The challenge is that, I mean, if you remember, MLP works with numbers. Like, you know, all of these connections are numbers. At the end, you want to have a number. And the class or labels doesn't go well or doesn't go at all with the way MLP works, right? So uh, we have to make sure that everything is numerical or represented with numbers in an appropriate way. Here we've got education level and paid loan in four which are categorical so we have to deal with that one of the way we can go about this is to um, you know use ranking transformation and here we are uh, transforming education level by one two three high high school bachelor and master one two three and load pain uh, yes no as one or two right so this is one way one could uh, you know go about this now once you do this um, you know, this is going to be your new data, and if you give this data set to a MLP module, it's going to work, and this is going to be uh, your prediction for the test set, right? And how do we go about classifying this? One would say, okay, if my prediction is below 1.45, it's the case of no. If it's larger than 1.5, it's the case of yes, right? Let us focus on if right now, if this is... A correct way to go about this right now I'm not talking about threshold link I'm talking about uh, do you feel like or do you see that we have made some huge errors in the way we pre-process the data so it could uh, be used for MLP 
think about this for a minute uh, before I turn to the next slide. And yes, we've made an error here. And the error that we've made here is the fact that we are attributing information by our data preprocessing that they don't exist in the data and in an MLP might uh, you know actually come up with patterns that are not real or useful and uh, it's basically we are running the risk of confusing MLP at the same time uh, it's not going to be correct or efficient and the fact that is you know why two is chosen for no and why yes is one I mean what, what, what are what are what, what are the reasons behind all of this I mean these are all uh, information added to the data that are not based on any reality right it's not that we can't find a perfect solution for this conundrum the solution we have applied here in this specific one is it could be better I mean we have another possibility that can be way better than this one and the possibility is to just binary code uh, the uh, dependent attribute or target by not just one attribute but two attributes right so with this binary coding we've got binary code for yes and no we are sort of like indicating or translating to MLP that there is this relationship between this yes and no if yes is higher then if the binary code of yes is you know higher this has to be lower so we are sort of like forcing MLP to sort of like keep this relationship between these two uh, binary codes so once we uh, do this now instead of having one target we're going to have two targets that have a specific relationship one another and once we uh, run this the way it's going to look like it's going to be uh, something like this so uh, it's going to be uh, numbers between zero and one and sometimes smaller than zero and larger than one and uh, they are going to sort of like very simple as far as us being able to classify them i mean the only we need to do for classification is saying if the yes fit or the fit that we found from MLP is larger than no of course we classify that as no and so on and so forth uh, we can also use the color coding as we did here and uh, it's just a very simple task classification and we kept those relationship intact another thing we could do is to produce probability probability like values here right so this is this shows the progression of how we would go about this so we do have these um, you know outputs of mlp neurons so these are just what mlp gives us outputs for these test sets right and in within two steps we can create probability like value the, the, on the first step what we do we calculate the uh, ratio of the yes based on the totality of uh, this uh, these two numbers right so what what's going to be what, what's been done here this is equal to this value divided by the summation of these two values and so on and so forth for all of them we do this calculation and we get to uh, this stage of probability like value and when we look at the, this stage we do have negative values and you know values larger than one which are not probability like so on the next stage we make sure everything that is below zero to be transformed to zero and anything is beyond one to be transformed to one and now we get probability like values in this video we managed to uh, adjust mlp uh, to i mean not adjust mlp uh, you know use mlp in a specific way to be able to get MLP to tackle the task of classification and also we saw how MLP could also produce probability like balance. Until the next video.